look what just arrived you guys it is mystery box time once again and if you thought i was challenged last time with just the one box you're definitely going to want to stay tuned because this time i have to diy with two this is Whiskey and Wit, and if this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Whitney, and on this channel, I love to share all things DIY and budget home decor. So if you love that kind of content, be sure to hit subscribe so we can be craft buddies. And for those of you that are new to the Mystery Box Challenge, we've been doing this for over two years. It's a fun, big secret Santa type thing where you get a name, you send a gift to that person, someone else in turn gets your name, you get a box of goodies that you have to craft with, you can use items from your stash, and you always get challenge items. And that's why I have a second package here this came over from Megan at glue guns and roses and everybody has the same items in this so there's gonna be two items that we all have to use it's fun to see how we can all have the same item and go in completely different directions that's what I love about DIYing because everybody can make it their own this box actually came from Courtney and I am so excited about it usually Courtney is pretty tough with her challenge items so I think I lucked out the fact that Megan sent them maybe I shouldn't say that I'll probably jinx myself we're gonna crack into this box this particular round it's anything goes I sent a box over to Bethany at bargain Bethany and I am so excited to see what she does with those items oh look there's a note in here hey girl don't be scared I went pretty easy on you if I do say so myself trust me it was hard to do that I'm oh. sure it was she can be ruthless I love her but she's really good at the challenge items it's kind of full so we'll see removable vinyl in this pretty print Okay, looks like she found some good sales stuff at Hobby Lobby in here. She sent me some jute twine because she knows I'm at my parents and that is what I said I might need. So thank you, Courtney, for that. Oh, these are cute. These must be from Dollar Tree. You can see there's like little wood beads in there. Cactus stickers, paint, blue, green, and then a green. I can work with that. We also have this cute little box from Hobby Lobby. Fun blue and green color yarn. A sign that says hope anchors the soul. Ooh, this is fun. I got one of these with an anchor on it. This is an awesome blank. Look at this, a little ice cream situation. I love this because the back you can paint and you don't have to worry about the lines. Ooh, I'm excited. And then also a fun little wood piece. You might be able to combine that there. Thank you, Courtney, for taking it easy on me. So as I mentioned, we're at my parents' house. We're staying with them throughout the summer until we can close on our new house. I am winging it. I've got half of my supplies here, half in storage, half-ish, so fingers crossed. Okay, now for the scary part. Megan, please be nice. <laughs> I can't. We got a diaper, coconut bikini top. I don't know if I'm happy that Courtney didn't send me the challenge item because I don't think she would have sent me a diaper. I'm gonna figure out what in the world I'm gonna do with all this stuff and then I will meet back with you in about three seconds and we will get crafting. Quick reminder here is everything that was in the box from Courtney and while I'm still reeling from these two crazy challenge items from Megan, I have an idea for everything. You're gonna wanna stay tuned till the end to see if my idea for these lovely things pans out. Now let's get into these projects. So for this first project, I'm tackling the paint, the yarn, the jute twine, and the metal sign, and some cardboard that I found at my parents' house. I'm starting by creating a shape of a popsicle in the cardboard and cutting it out. I'm just freehanding it and kind of trimming as I go. Then I'm gonna paint the entire thing white, except for a little bit of the bottom, just so I can have a really neutral base. I'm also gonna paint the bottom with some brown paint to make it look like a popsicle stick. I started with the color cinnamon, and then I added a little bit darker of a color just to get the shade that I was looking for. So starting at the top, this is the blue she sent me, and this is actually outdoor paint, but it's just acrylic, so it's covering great. I did a little curve, to it and then I also did the same thing following a similar curve at the bottom with the green. Now I was gonna use the third green color she sent me but I thought this needed a purple so I just grabbed a purple from my stash and did that. Then with a black paint marker I'm starting my outline so that it looks a little bit more whimsical and fun like summer. I'm making sure that my lines don't fully attach but it's covering most of the outside area. 
Then I'm taking all three of those colors that I originally used for the popsicle, mixing them with a little bit of white, and then using a paintbrush to kind of twirl it around in a circular motion to create these cute little polka dots. You can add as much or as little white to your paint as you want, and that is gonna dictate how much it pops on the sign. So as you can see, my purple and green are popping a little bit more than the blue, but I didn't mind. Once my polka dots dried, I went through with a white paint marker and added just a little curve to the edge of all of them. The goal here is to make them kind of look like bubbles. I've been really enjoying this painting technique. I've been doing it on a few different projects. I just did them on some 4th of July fireworks. And after that, I'm adding squiggles and just adding some depth to each of the items. What I like here is I can wing it and it's really fun and creative for me. So next we're gonna grab that metal sign that Courtney sent and remove the little seahorse so that we just have a plain blank sign. We're gonna put that to the side because we're gonna use him later. And then on that plain side, I just cut out Hello Summer on my Cricut. And if you don't have a Cricut, no worries. You can grab some Dollar Tree stickers. They've got some awesome ones for summer. So you can customize it or just use a marker and draw it yourself. I'm gonna glue that sign right on the center and then to create a hanger so I can hang this up on the door, I'm gonna add some jute twine and some hot glue. Once the jute twine is in my glue, I'm gonna add some more to the top. I like to really entomb that jute twine and that's gonna help it hang up. Then my last touch is to add a cluster ribbon and yes, it's official crafting term. That's what I like to call these ribbons. I'm taking a variety of pieces that I had in my stash here. I decided to cut these three inch ribbons in half just so it fit more size wise with this sign. Tied it in the center with some jute twine and glued it to the top to add just a little embellishment. I think this thing is so cute. I love that it's made out of cardboard as well because you can really trace and cut whatever you want. It's super cheap and a great way to decorate your front door on a budget. Next, I am tackling these really cute little cactus stickers. These look like they were on clearance from Hobby Lobby. And I'm also using some of these little magnet buttons I recently picked up at Dollar Tree. Now Dollar Tree has really upped their game with stickers and such lately. I found these for springtime and they are so pretty and these would work really great with this process as well. We're gonna make some fun magnets for my new craft room for when we move into the new house. I'm just peeling them off of the backer sheet and sticking that adhesive right onto the magnet. Now because I had two little sticky pieces, I'm getting rid of the top one so that doesn't stick to the fridge or wherever the magnets are going. And this is just another fun, easy way that you can use stickers, especially ones that match your motif. This would be really fun with scrapbook stickers from like a Hobby Lobby or Michaels. And these are gonna go great in my new craft room. So for this next one, I am gonna grab that little white box as well as that seahorse we just removed from the sign. And I also had another one of these signs from Dollar Tree that had an anchor on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same process and chop that off so I've got these two little metal pieces and then set the sign to the side so I could use it later. Now in my summer haul for Dollar Tree, I shared this lighthouse and I haven't really had a project in mind for it yet, but when I saw this box, I thought the width would be perfect and sure enough, it is to add to this box. So I'm just gonna go through and use some hot glue. I'm using the Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks and I'm just gonna glue the box to the metal and then I'm gonna stick both of these cute little embellishments on the front. Now when I'm sticking these on, I wanna make sure that it's not hanging over the bottom of the basket because if it was, then I wouldn't be able to sit it up. So if you wanted to recreate this look, you could easily grab a Dollar Tree crate and paint the bottom white. And because I don't typically decorate with nautical stuff, I thought this would be a great addition to my mom's laundry room and bathroom right off the pool. It goes really cute with all of this nautical stuff and I was able to kind of scooch everything and realize it would be a great holder for the soap in there. So I just added it to the crate. It just adds a little bit more to the theme in there. And this was literally a five minute DIY. Hey friend, Finn and I are taking a quick pause in the DIYs to remind you to make sure that you turn on your notifications. If you are not getting notified when I post new content and you love with seeing what videos, head down and hit the little bell down there. They will notify you when I post a new video and Finn would really appreciate it. As I was opening the box, I had a lot of different ideas for signs with the items. So this first one, I'm using that hexagon sign and I'm starting by removing the beads. I'm gonna put those to the side to use for a later project and then take some white chalk paint and paint two coats onto my sign. 
If you've been around a while, you know I love to use my Cricut to add things to signs, but if you don't have a Cricut or would rather do something more graphical like this, you can easily cut out a printable to size. I'm just tracing here and kind of cutting bit by bit until I can get it to fit within the hexagon. It was a little tricky because it's an interesting shape, but I measured from the widest point of each side and kind of worked from there. Then I'm just using some double stick tape to stick it in there. It will hold it great, but you won't have to worry about Mod Podge. And then I thought about adding the beads to the bottom to give the sign some feet, but it kept falling over, so I just popped them off and left it kind of flat. I absolutely love these watercolor popsicles, and you can download this file if you want to put it on a sign or frame it over on my blog. Just click the link down in the description. Sign number two is going to use the wood sign, the ice cream cutout, and then some more of that paint. I'm starting by cutting this Dollar Tree wood piece in blue paint, and then I'm also going to paint my ice cream cone white fully just to give myself a neutral base. Now I decided to do some green kind of frosting, kind of a mint chocolate chip kind of vibe and that's because I had this paint to use in the mystery box you could easily add red or pink for like a strawberry syrup or you could do a chocolate syrup caramel syrup really the sky's the limit I just wanted to use green because of the box then I'm using the same technique that I did on the bottom of my popsicle so I'm going in with a lighter brown first and then adding a little bit darker brown to kind of blend it in and give it a multi-tone look I set my ice cream piece to the side to dry and I cut out this decal on my Cricut. Now, I absolutely love this commercial that I'm referencing here. It's a Geico commercial and it's French vanilla, Rocky Road, chocolate, peanut butter cookie dough, scoop, there it is. If you don't remember the ad, here is a little reminder, but I love incorporating fun, pop culture, quirky things into my decor and this was just the time to do it. Then I'm going to go through and add a little bit more to the ice cream cone. So I'm starting by adding some white lines around the outside to give it some depth. And then I'm using a variety of different paint markers to create sprinkles all the way around. This is where you can really get creative and make it your own. And then to finish it off, I'm grabbing a black paint marker to really make some of these pieces pop. I'm just going around the outside where that white was originally. And then I'm going to add some more white to the bottom to make it kind of look like a waffle cone cup. And now for the cherry on top of this project, and yes, the pun is intended, I'm using one of those beads from the previous sign, painting it red, and then just using a teeny little piece of cardboard to have it be kind of the stem of a cherry, gluing that right to the top of my cute little ice cream piece, and then we're going to take some hot glue and glue it right to the sign. I wanted to make sure this could stand up on its own, so I'm creating kind of a faux little kickstand using two more of those beads I took off that sign and just gluing them. It took a couple tries to kind of get it to sit how I wanted, but once both of those were glued down, the sign would sit on its own. I absolutely love this thing. I get such a kick out of it. It would be so cute for an ice cream party, an ice cream display, or just near like a coffee bar or your kitchen counter to add some fun and whimsy to your summer. And we'll laugh every time because Alex always quotes this ad. <laughs> Now number three in the sign trifecta is going to use the vinyl as well as the yarn from the box and one of these signs that I have from Dollar Tree. I made these in a 4th of July video and I had one left over so I decided this was the time to use it. I started by peeling off that little foam piece at the top and I was going to try to take off the wording but I decided to just leave it because I was adding the vinyl. I trimmed it down to size and then peeled off a little bit of the edge so I could line it up. I gave myself a little bit of slack on either side, a little overhang so that I could make sure everything was going to be covered. I'm using a variety of tools like a Cricut squeegee and a little Cricut hook just to make sure everything got into the eaves of the house. And then I'm going to go through with some scissors just to kind of score that edge and be able to peel it back. The way that the roof is on these, it's a little wonky, so there's like a little piece that ripped off, so I just put a little bit back on and you can not even tell. After trimming off the excess on each side, I went through my yarn and found the blue chunk because it was kind of a multicolor slash ombre kind of yarn. I found the blue that matched the blue green within the vinyl and I tied that just around the bottom to finish it off. Now I plan to use this just as like a stager sign behind something, but you could easily add a photo to it or use it as a photo frame. You could add a Cricut decal, a ton of different options, but here are a few different ways you can customize signs, some with and some without a Cricut. So now it's the moment you've all been waiting for. We're grabbing the coconut bra, the diaper, and I'm also throwing in these little beads from the box from Courtney because I've got to use all three together. Send me all the good vibes and here goes nothing. 
So funny enough, my mom and dad live close to a Dollar General. I recently went there and found some of this oven baked clay that looked really fun. So I bought it and it was just sitting on the shelf. I decided that these items would make a really good texture on something. So I decided to use the white oven baked clay, work it around in my hands, roll it out, and I thought I could stamp it with the bikini bra. Well, at first I didn't put any parchment paper down. You can tell I've never used this type of clay before because this is like newbie central over here, but we kept pressing on. This one looked terrible, so I decided to wise up and get some parchment paper, which meant I got back in the car and drove back over to Dollar General because of course I couldn't find any in my stash. But once I did that, it helped that I was able to kind of try a few different ways and I was able to stamp the clay with that texture that was on the bra, which was beautiful. I then just grabbed a little rocks glass to use as a cookie cutter and peel it off really carefully so I don't like stretch anything. I went on to make three more of these and then they were ready for the oven. Then I wanted to also try to use a similar technique with the diaper because I thought the ruffle kind of on the leg part that's used to stop leaks would be really good for texture. So I cut that piece off and used it to stamp onto just a little oval piece of clay. I'm going for kind of rustic here, kind of organic looks and that's what this kind of I don't know, texture gave it. Listen to me, I'm like trying to make this sound like super high end, I'm crafting with a diaper, but stick with me, it will be cute. So here's that texture and I actually really liked how it turned out. And then I decided that I was gonna make this thing a leopard print. So I grabbed some of the dark brown and just pinched off like little pieces to put it all around my circle. And then I took some black and rolled it out between my fingers into like little skinny like pieces of the clay and added that around each of the brown pieces to kind of give it an abstract leopard print look. It's one of those things you have to trust the process because like right now it looks kind of iffy but once each piece kind of gets that outer black piece it really starts to look like leopard print. Then to create my little shape that I'm going for, I'm taking a oven safe dish, some parchment paper and putting it in there. I'm also putting my four circles onto some parchment paper and this is all gonna go in the oven for 30 minutes at 250 degrees. I followed the package instructions and that told me like 15 minutes. So I ended up doing 30 and it worked. This texture turned out beautifully. It didn't cave in the oven. And then I decided to really va va voom it up with some of this rub and buff. I used this around Easter to make some golden eggs. They were Kirkland's dupes and I had a ton left over. So I decided to put it around the outside and then I thought, let's really make this thing. We're gonna add it to the top of the texture and it made it pop so, so pretty. Once I did that to all four of my coasters, I decided that it needed a bottom. And so I went through with some felt, cut out some circles so that I could glue them with super glue to the bottom so that if I used them on a delicate table, it wasn't gonna scratch anything. And then I thought, wait, the diaper. Could I make a bottom for one of these from the diaper? Why not? So we cut it out and I added some more super glue and added that to the bottom of one of my coasters. So. If you got any diapers hanging around, it's the most expensive piece that you'll put on the bottom of any coaster, but it will work. Overall, I really love how these turned out. I love the rub and buff on them because it really makes them shine and they're gonna be great for coffee and drinks in my new craft room to protect the tables. Now you're thinking, what about that leopard stuff, Whitney? You said it was gonna be cute. Yes, it turned out really cute. Let me show you. So when it came out, it had this really nice curve to it because I put it in that bowl and I decided to add some gold rub and buff to the outside to make that kind of pop. And then here comes our box item that I had to use with these two crazy items from Megan. I'm adding some gold rub and buff to those. And then when it dried, there were some chunks. So I just used my finger to kind of buff it out and it's gonna give it a really seamless look. I'm gonna use these as little legs for my jewelry dish to get it up off the table. And so I'm just using some super glue there too to stick those on. This is gonna be great for my rings and stuff when I craft. It doesn't take up a ton of room, but it's big enough where I can see and remember where I put my jewelry. So I was gonna end there, friends. And then I thought, is somebody going to ding me because I didn't use all of the items in one singular thing? And I thought, you know what, maybe. So we are going to go back and we're gonna do something to tie it all together. I'm cutting another ruffle piece off of the diaper and I'm rolling it into a spiral here and we're gonna make a flower out of this diaper and it's gonna be beautiful. 
So the center, you're gonna roll it up and then add some glue. And I'm telling you this, like you're probably gonna DIY this yourself. You're probably not gonna use a diaper for this, but you can if you want. I'm cutting a couple circles here, kind of half circles, but then I cut those in half. So they're kind of like little rainbow moon shapes. Give it a slit in the center and then fold it over and glue it. That's gonna give you a little 3D petal. But I added the four petals on the outside and it really started to look like a flower. The white really washed out, so I added a little bit more of that gold rub and buff so you could kind of see the different edges of the flower. And then I used the strings from that bikini top. We are we're stretching here, but you know, we will press on. It's the mystery box challenge. I added one of those beads to the center and then I finished braiding. I glued my flower onto the center and I thought this could be a way to hold together all of those coasters. And every single item from the diaper to the bikini top to those beads is all in this one shot. So Megan, you tried to stump me, but hopefully I did you proud. So that's gonna do it for me on this round of the mystery box challenge. Be sure to let me know down in the comments which project was your favorite and also let me know what you would have done with those crazy ridiculous challenge items. Up next for you is Bethany's video over on her channel, Bargain Bethany. You can find that via the links down in the description as well as the full playlist so you can see everybody's video and see what the heck they did with those challenge items. A huge thank you too to Courtney for an awesome box and for coordinating these time in and time out super thankful for her and the friendship and all the work she puts into these mystery box challenges because they are so fun thanks so much for watching hit subscribe if you're new so we can be craft buddies and i'll catch you in the next one bye what an actual heck megan this makes total sense that this came from megan like i'm not shocked like this is megan's sense of humor and she doesn't even have to diy with it so she's just gonna be sitting there sipping her drink having just grand old time and we're gonna be like just yelling at diapers.